What's up, YouTube? I am so fucking sick and tired of the gatekeeping that exists in cybersecurity. Specifically in my field of ethical hacking, I see it all the time, and I am just so tired of it. So today we're going to talk about the path that you can take to get into ethical hacking and what the only path looks like into ethical hacking. So let's tear down some gatekeepers today. Let's talk about what we can do to get into ethical hacking and let's just all be successful. How about that? So we're going to take a quick word from our sponsor and then we're just going to dive right into this. There are a ton of vulnerabilities out there from remote code execution to prototype pollution and even SQL injection, just to name a few. As an ethical hacker, I love exploiting these types of vulnerabilities, but also running a development team, I hate seeing these types of vulnerabilities show up in our applications. That's where Sneak comes in. Sneak automatically scans your code, dependencies, containers, and configurations, finding and automatically fixing vulnerabilities in real time. So here's how easy this is. You can use my link, sneak.co forward slash the cyber mentor. Come to the landing page here and hit sign up. Once you're signed up, you can come in here and add a project. I'm going to select a project from GitHub. And once your project's imported, Sneak finds your vulnerabilities and you can fix them with just a click. Watch this. I come into here, I can open a fix PR or a pull request. And Sneak opens fix PR so you can merge and move on. Plus, it does it all from your existing tools, IDEs, CLI, repos, pipelines, Docker Hub, and more. And look how easy that was to just do a pull request with these issues in hand. It's amazingly fast. So what are you waiting for? Come check out Sneak and find out if there's any vulnerabilities within your projects. It's free and you can sign up using my link at sneak.co forward slash the cyber mentor. Okay, look, I've gotten into some tiffs lately on social media and it's because anytime that I see gatekeeping, I have been calling it out. And by gatekeeping, what I mean is this, I call it get off my lawn type attitude, but this attitude of I did this path, so you have to. And this is coming more from an older mindset of managers that came up into industry 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and they took a certain path. Now, this path can be a variety of things. It could be something like, hey, I was a developer and then I became an ethical hacker. I was a sysadmin, then I became an ethical hacker. I was a network engineer, then I became an ethical hacker. And they are saying that if you do not do one of these paths, then you are SOL, you're going to be a bad ethical hacker, it's just not going to work out for you. And I'm seeing this time and time again, to the point where I am absolutely fed up with it. So let's talk about paths. All right. I took a path of being a help desk person. I worked help desk. I absolutely loved it. I tell people if it makes sense for you, you should work a help desk. I worked a help desk for an MSP, which is a managed service provider. If you're not familiar with what that means, that means we had a bunch of clients, different architecture. I had to learn Linux, Mac, Windows, all this different stuff and how to fix things for different clients with various environments, essentially. So it was really nice. It was a great learning experience. One of the best times and most exciting times of my IT career. And I loved it. However, I was only making $40,000 a year. There are people that are out there that were making or are making way more than that. And switching to a help desk job doesn't make sense. So telling somebody you have to go work help desk would be absolutely terrible advice. What better advice would be is, hey, it would be wise of you to make sure you have the knowledge equivalent of working at a help desk. Okay, some people are saying, well, you only get certifications, you can't go get this hands on experience, then if you don't have hands on experience, you are you're, you're screwed for your career. And that's not true either. Hands on experience is very, very important. All right, I love my hands on experience. I love having had it with help desk, I worked in as a network engineer, it was great to get hands on with these things. And yeah, it did make me a better pen tester. However, there are always alternatives. I'll give you another alternative. There's a guy that works for us at TCM security. His name is Joe Helly. Joe Helly was a mayor before he went into pen testing. Guess what he did? He studied his ass off. He got a bachelor's degree. He went and got multiple certifications. He landed an internship. 
by networking and just doing great things. And he ended up getting a job in the field without any IT experience. He's a kick-ass pen tester. Doesn't matter what his background was or what he worked. He absolutely rocks it as a pen tester. Now, there's another guy named Michael Padrick who used to own a pool company, like a pool cleaning and services company. Guess what? Never a day in IT went on to be a pen tester and is doing well for himself. I'll give you one more example. There is a guy that used to intern for us. His name is Tony Fontana. He had no certifications, no anything. He was able to network his way into an internship with us, which landed him a job as a full-time pen tester. Again, he is doing excellent his job. He is great at what he does, and he didn't have this formal background. So we need to take a step back when it comes to saying, hey, the only path into cybersecurity or the only path into ethical hacking is the path I took. It would be horrible for me to say you have to go out and be a help desk person and then a network engineer because that might not make sense for a lot of you. It could make sense for some of you. It's a great path, but it's not the only path. All right. And you could go out and say, yeah, I want to be a sysadmin or I want to go work in a SOC before I do pen testing. Would that be beneficial for you? Absolutely. Is it the only path? Fuck no, it's not. All right. So keep this in mind when you're talking about the gatekeeping. And if you see gatekeeping out there like this, call it out. There is no only path. There is no degree in ethical hacking. This isn't like being a doctor where you have to go get a degree. And then you have to go and you have to go to medical school and then maybe you have to specialize. OK, this is something where, hey, you don't even need a degree. You might not even need certifications. Look at Tony Fontana. No certifications. Didn't need it. So your path is what you make of it. So when we talk about the only path in cybersecurity, you want to know what the only path in cybersecurity is? The only path in cybersecurity is the one that you make for yourself. That's it. Don't worry about anybody else. You worry about you. You worry about your best situation and putting your best foot forward. If that means going and working a help desk, if that financially means it, if that makes sense for you, then go do it. If going and going back to school and doing an education makes the most sense for you, then go do it. If you want to go work at a help desk job, you want to go work as a sysadmin, you want to go do whatever, go do it. But if you want to skip all that and you want to bust your ass and you want to go get certifications and Fill up your knowledge with other things, maybe do an internship, whatever it might be. That's a path too. So the only path into ethical hacking is the path that you make for yourself. Nothing else. That's it. That's it for the video. That's all I've got. This is my rant. Please, let's end gatekeeping. Let's stop these people from saying that you have to do X, Y, Z. Let's stop this get off my lawn mentality. Let's stop this I did this path so you have to do it too mentality. Let's knock that shit out, all right? So that's it. Again, the only path into ethical hacking is the path that you make for yourself.